seems that its competitors are really um, going gung-ho on EVs. And this has got to, I would imagine, even at the margins, impact how you view Tesla and its market share you know, by 2030, let's say. I just want to quickly put GM's comments into perspective. They've had a two-day, as, as you mentioned, analyst day. They talked about doing uh, about 90 billion in EV revenue at the end of the decade. So nine years from now, 90 billion. Uh, Tesla, by my math, should be around 700 billion in uh, EV revenue at that point. Uh, in other words, is that uh, if you take uh, a GM's guidance and say that they're gonna achieve that guidance, their electric business will be 15% of the size of what Tesla says their electric business can be. The substance of the targets fall well short. And uh, the bottom line is that they're gonna be losing market share in the new EV world. I don't know. Maybe he won. Elon, you know, for for, you know, like ruler of the uh, of the galaxy. I mean, at this point, Ming the Merciless, you know, I mean, it's him. He won. We're done. Hey, I'm Stephen, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So some exciting news this morning. General Motors have tacitly admitted that they will be bankrupt before the decade is over. Or in an extremely unlikely best case scenario, GM have simply decided and told us their plans to become a completely irrelevant spec. And in more exciting news, we're watching the transformation of Tesla stock analyst Gene Munster, who in the past, although bullish on the company, has been very conservative, very measured in his comments, his statements, his predictions, and his projections about where the company will wind up. Gene Munster is now clearly turning a leaf, and we're watching this happen in real time, becoming one of the more bullish analysts on Wall Street. Now, although Gene Munster isn't the first analyst on Wall Street to really start to see Tesla's long-term potential, he is one of the first who also frequently does media appearances in the mainstream finance media. This is more important than it seems, as I've mentioned in the past. Unbelievably, there are still people who tune into the likes of CNBS to get their investment news and information. So let's listen to what Gene Munster has to say about Tesla, Tesla stock, and then also some of the reactions of the panel, whose opinions on the company are also evolving, changing, and becoming more bullish over time. If you love crypto, stocks, and free stuff, or just want to help out the channel, check out these great offers. BlockFi are launching the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card. People in the US can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase with no annual fee using the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. Check out the link in the description. And for a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $300 just for opening an account. And if you make an initial deposit of $5 or more, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $2,000. Seriously, free stocks? Yes, please. And finally, if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for your support, guys. Let's get back to it. My number one question is when is Cybertruck coming out? As a quick refresher, pickup trucks account for 20% of U.S. sales. I don't know what it is globally. This is a big market. It has been delayed. That's my number one question. And if I can uh, take a little bit more here. And my number two uh, question is around Model 2. This is their $25,000 uh, uh, car that they've, they've teased at coming out. It is tough to build a car, to purchase a new car for $25,000, and they're going to try to do that. And I think when you put those two together, get a better sense of what's going on with Cybertruck and Model 2 in combination with their current lineup, which obviously is growing 100% faster than the rest of auto, you can start to build a case where this uh, company can deliver on its goal. Now, maybe I'm wrong here. Please let me know in the comments if you think that I've misinterpreted this. But in the context of these comments, Gene Munster talking about Tesla introducing new vehicles, the Cybertruck, the $25,000 Tesla as well. He said, you can start to build a case where this company can deliver on its goal. Now, what goal would he be referring to? Would that be 20 million electric vehicles sold per year at the end of this decade? Or maybe he's referring to a compound annual rate of growth of over 50% per year sustained for a multi-year period, which, uh, spoiler alert, they're basically the same goal. It wasn't long ago where practically every single analyst on Wall Street would laugh at Tesla's goals. Now we're hearing an analyst like Gene Munster say he can actually see a case where they will achieve their goals. Is growing 100% faster than the rest of auto. You can start to build a case where this uh, company can deliver on its goal. They started out the 
the analyst day here or the uh, shareholder meeting mm -hmm. by kind of reiterating their goal of, uh, of 20 million vehicles. And so you can see how you can get there. Hmm. There you go. Gene has just confirmed it. He was talking about Tesla achieving their goal of 20 million electric vehicles per year. How do you view Tesla's goals, Gene? Um, and, and those two data points when it comes to uh, the Cybertruck as well as the, the lower cost car um, in light of GM's bold uh, target raises from yesterday and also Ford's big plan, particularly for the F-150. It seems that its competitors are really um, going gung-ho on EVs. And this has got to, I would imagine, even at the margins, impact how you view Tesla and its market share You know, by 2030, let's say. You're getting to the core question around sustainability of this massive growth and this potential that they can grow at 50% compound for the next 10 years, which they talk about. But I just want to quickly put GM's comments into perspective. They've had a two day, as, as you mentioned, analyst day. They talked about doing uh, about 90 billion in EV revenue at the end of the decade. So nine years from now, 90 billion. Uh, Tesla, by my math, should be around 700 billion in uh, EV revenue at that point. Um, guys, what the hell is going on here? Gene Munster and I are on the same page, like the exact same page. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll probably have seen me run through these numbers, but just in case you haven't, I'm assuming an average selling price of $35,000 per vehicle at the end of this decade, factoring in lower price models in the future. And if we times this by 20 million units, we end up with $700 billion in revenue just from automotive sales. What's going on here? I find this a little unsettling. A Wall Street stock analyst landing on the exact same number as me? What? Now, admittedly, I don't think Gene Munster is yet factoring in as much software revenue, nor the same high profit margins that I am. But man, this is a very positive sign. Keep a close eye on what Gene Munster has to say about Tesla in the coming years. I think he's really starting to get it. Uh, in other words, is that uh, if you take uh, a GM's guidance and say that they're going to achieve that guidance, their electric business will be 15% of the size of what Tesla says their electric business can be. They're all estimates, so the proof is in the pudding, but uh, I would just say that uh, as uh, a company that has been around for a long time, General Motors, understand their excitement around being a platform company, EV, robo-taxis, that is all good to hear, but the substance of the targets fall well short. And uh, the bottom line is that they're going to be losing market share in the new EV world. And there you have it. GM have officially announced their plans to go bankrupt later this decade and give all of their market share to Tesla. Now, some of you might be thinking, Stephen, come on, man, that's a little bit unreasonable. 15% of Tesla's market share. That's something, right? It's got to count for something. They're not going bankrupt. Well, here's the problem. GM today has well in excess of $100 billion of debt. Much of it secured to internal combustion engine vehicles that they finance for customers. Those assets, the ICE vehicles, will effectively become worthless almost overnight as the sticker price of EVs drops dramatically below that of a comparable internal combustion engine vehicle. And at the same time that GM somehow has to deal with his bad debt, they need to invest tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars transitioning the entire business to being capable of producing electric vehicles at volume while their unit economics are working against them. They're selling less vehicles so they're benefiting less and less from economies of scale. All the while Tesla continues to run away with market share. General Motors is going to need to find software developers. Where are they coming from? GM is going to need to dump huge numbers of people currently working at the company because they don't have expertise in batteries or software. They're going to need to hire like mad. Where are they going to get the talent from? And you think they're going to stay in business while doing this? Good fucking luck. Just roughly speaking, GM is expecting half of their revenue in 2030 to be coming from ICE vehicles. And they're planning and taking actions accordingly. What can I say? All aboard the Titanic, enjoy your cruise. Of course, this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who's been following along with the GM story. After all, this is the same company whose desperate and incompetent leadership, embarrassingly, publicly, and moronically, decided to announce a, quote, strategic partnership with what was obviously a fraud of a company allegedly do your own research, Nikola Motor Corporation, who, as far as I'm aware, are still currently under investigation from both the Securities Exchange Commission and the Department of Justice. <laughs> but good thing that was just a one-off mistake. It's not like they also partnered with Fraudstown Motors. Oh, wait, that happened as well. Maybe you guys have heard of the General Motors 000 strategy. If not, feel free to jump on Google. But to save you the time, it means zero vision, zero awareness, and zero brains. Gene, for a long time, we had to sort of sit and watch to see if Elon Musk was going to say, tweet, do something that could um, have a detrimental impact on the stock. It seems as though we're well past that. As a matter of fact, 
I would submit it looks like he's really grown into the job of CEO. Is mm -hmm. that an observation you share? And quite frankly, if it is, you know, I think this stock is poised to take out the all-time highs we made at that $900 level or so. I, I mean, I'm always reluctant to try to predict what Elon's going to do, but you are accurate. They've, he's been um, more CEO-like. Uh, I think he's still kind of maintained his, his personality, too. I do question how long he wants to do this job. I suspect it's probably for five more years and uh, maybe two more years as CEO, three more years, and then probably go to a chairman role. I think space and Mars is is more compelling to him. Agreed. I want to just quickly uh, get to the, the point about a breakout here is that it's hard to predict a breakout when you've had the kind of performance that Tesla stock has had. But when you put the pieces together around their current business, how they're gaining share around what the future products are, you can build a case that this can be a much bigger company. Gene Munster of Loop. And we've talked about this before in terms of really competing. And when you're talking about one of the best selling vehicles in the United States and around the world, the F Ford F-150, Tim, it would seem that getting a cyber truck that is really competitive would be key to keeping its market share in that particular segment. And then getting that Model 2 car out is going to be key to it maintaining its more than 60 percent market share as well. You would think so, but but again, you know the 241,000. The deliveries have been so extraordinary, and and the ramping, you you have to give credit. And so, to the extent that that I, you know, again, the EV opportunity, everybody understands that. Oh, the irony here, just it hurts to watch. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the story here, Tim Seymour on C Less, whatever his name is, has been famously extremely bearish on Tesla. It's been short Tesla stock, got absolutely wrecked. He still remains bearish. It's very difficult for him to give a compliment to the company, but even now he's starting to acknowledge their incredible execution and their bright future. But the thing that really gets me is hearing Tim Seymour say the EV opportunity, everybody gets that. And I'm not arguing the point today. I think the vast majority of people, at least those who aren't complete and utter morons, do realize that EVs will be the predominant form of transportation and almost every new vehicle sold in the future. People are a little bit more bearish than others on the timeline, but overall, I think everybody gets this. What's ironic is that Tim was one of the last people to figure this out and now everybody gets it. And it really is right now, I think, a scaling issue, which um, you know, Tesla has to, has to still get further down the road, even though uh, major, major victories. Uh, by the way, you have to point out also that the stock has been a bedrock of stability during a volatile market. I mean, it's almost extraordinary when you when you look at, at just how unvolatile or, or 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 really kind of benign the price movements have been in Tesla or in the month of September when the rest of the market has been having a very difficult time. Look, I don't change my tune on the multiple and not a buyer of Tesla at these levels. And even if you put a five dollar EPS on 2022, which I think is is you know, not aggressive, but it shows, you know, a lot more profitability than they had yesterday. It's still 155 times number. And I, I think they will lose market share. So again, I think this is as good as it gets in terms of the competitive landscape being behind them. And I think they're closing fast. Dan, just quickly, in terms of the relative outperformance, and you've pointed this out when it comes to Tesla in the ARC Innovation Fund relative to the rest of the components there, which are supposedly growthier, cutting edge kinds of companies. And Tesla's really held up. Do you buy the thesis that Guy's putting forth that part of this might be that Elon Musk has got a muzzle on, so to speak? I mean, he, he's actually acting like a grown-up CEO. I mean, aside from the Shiba Inu tweets, etc., um, you know, he's, he's relatively stayed these days. Well, he, it's not only that he's stayed. He, he's actually growing into that genius that everyone says that he is. I saw him at Code last week with Kara Swisher. I mean, he's very deliberate about a lot of things that he says. And I think Gene also mentioned the fact that He's focused on Mars. And when you talk to him, and it's not just a Tesla conversation, you see, I mean, they're sending satellites and they're returning the rocket ships and they're sending man, you know, I mean, they're doing big, big things. So I think he kind of gets really where he needs to be for a guy who's going to have a trillion dollar market cap company in Tesla in the not so distant future, probably. And then you tell me, what's the TAM on a SpaceX? I mean, it's is it trillions? You know what I mean? So I don't know. Maybe he won. Elon, you know, for for, you know, like ruler of the uh, of the galaxy. I mean, at this point, Ming the Merciless, you know, I mean, it's him. He won. We're done. Oh, geez. Looks like Tim was having a bit of a flashback to his Tesla short position there. 
I feel for the guy. He obviously didn't get the message. Don't bet against Elon. As always, there's a link in the description if you'd like to pick up your own Don't Bet Against Elon merch. So I hope you guys and girls have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below your prediction for the exact day that GM goes bankrupt. And also, is it just me or is Gene Munster legitimately becoming a hyperbole on Tesla stock? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card, where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase. There's a link in the description. You can also earn up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, also linked below. And finally, don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake, also linked in the description. These great offers also help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.